A logo, ACB, in print and braille, American Council of the Blind, together for a bright future. Celebrating Global Accessibility Awareness Day, four Zoom boxes on screen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this video edition of the ACB Advocacy Update. My name is Clark Rockfall, and I am the Director of Advocacy and Governmental Affairs for the American Council of the Blind. And I am Swathananda Kumar. I am AC's Advocacy Network Specialist. And today we are coming to you on Global Accessibility Awareness Day, or GAD. Happy GAD, Swatha. Happy GAD, Clark. And we are joined by a couple guests from our ACB family, aren't we, Swatha? Yeah, so we've got Dan Spoon and Carl Richardson. So, Carl, do you want to introduce yourself? Introduce yourself? Carl, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, yes. Hi. Um, my name is Carl Richardson. I a, am a member of the deaf blind community, and I am also the co-chair of the Audio Description Project for the American Council of the Blind. Welcome. Great. Then, Dan? Thank you, Swatha. This is Dan Spoon, the Interim Executive Director for the American Council of the Blind. And it's really wonderful to be here today to celebrate Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Clark, it really is important to our community of blind and low vision individuals. It absolutely is, Dan. We've been celebrating Global Accessibility Awareness Day for more than a decade now. And this is really a great opportunity to increase awareness, not only among our members and people who are blind and low vision, but all of you out there, uh, raising awareness of the importance of accessibility for people with disabilities. That is what Global Accessibility Awareness Day is all about. And here we are using technology, accessible technology, Dan, to share this message with the rest of the world. We truly are, and it true, I believe it is the challenge of the first half of the 21st century. You know, we worked hard to have good, uh, you know, mobility and physical access uh, to our environment through the last half of the 20th century. But I really do believe the next 20 to 30 years, our challenge is going to be not to be left behind as technology continues to move forward, whether it be websites, applications, elevators, there's so many things in our world now that are a challenge for our blind and low vision community when it comes to uh, accessibility. And I, and I just think that's, that's where our focus has to be. Uh, Clark and uh, Carl and Swatha, it's great to be with here with all of you today. And Carl, you know, could you share, share a little bit about your being a deaf blind man and dealing with ability? So as a person with the dual sensory loss, well, first of all, I always, I was born hard of hearing. So growing up, I relied tremendously on vision to make up for that. I could walk into a room, instantly assess what was going on, and I could actually follow a conversation from across the room because I was actually a, a very skilled lip reader. As my vision got worse and my hearing got worse, sense of orientation, mobility, what's going on, and, and lack of access to information has been difficult. So Global Accessibility Day to me means one thing, access to information, which is access to power. If you have access to information, you have access to employment opportunities. You have access to uh, entertainment and leisure activities, such as movies, TV shows, theater. If you have access, you have access to financial information. If all those things are accessible, and it's important when we think of Global Accessibility Day that they do it in concept of universal design. So it works across the spectrum of people with disabilities, whether you're a uh, high partial, low partial, totally blind, uh, hard of hearing blind, deaf blind, uh, a person who may have an intellectual or hidden disability and blind, or a person with mobility, concerned um there, there's a wide or even on the mental health spectrum there's a wide range of people with disabilities 
And the one thing that separates people from being able to accomplish what they need to do to accomplish in life, I believe, is truly access to information. And that's what Global Accessibility Day is all about, giving us access to that information so that we can be better informed uh, individuals in the world today. And Swatha, how about you? I mean, what does Global Accessibility Day mean to you and why is it so important? Yeah, so for me, um, I, I just want to echo what Carl said about access to information like that. That's the way things are going now. Um, for me, like, I mean, you've heard me on podcast before, like, I have a speech impediment and also um, kind of mobility, mobility and, and dexterity issues. Disability. So, um, for me, it's like more, more, more physical. Like I, I consider more physical, more physical access than uh, maybe Clark or Carl or Carl does or Dan does. So, um, like, just that idea of like having like access, access, access information for anyone who wants to, who wants and needs it. Like, I just think like, if it, no matter no matter what your like ability is, like if you have again like deaf or blind because it's a physical disability mental health, cognitive, like all that, you need to have access to the same tools and resources as uh, persons that persons people with disabilities. So just want to echo what Carl said. And Dan, uh, I imagine that Carl and Swatha are not unique amongst the membership of the American Council of the Blind. Yes, our primary focus is advocating for and on behalf of people who are blind and low vision, but among our members, th that's only one aspect of their lives, right? There, there are many folks among our staff, our board of directors, our affiliates that have more than one disability, including blindness. Most definitely, Clark. I mean, I, I think it's, I don't know if we have exact demographics on it, but I would say it's probably at least a quarter of our members are dealing with multiple disabilities. It's not just blindness and low vision. And it's, I think, uh, a testimony to ACB that we've done so much work, whether it be our sight and sound impaired committee, our mental health and wellness committee, our information access committee, transportation and pedestrian access committees we are working so hard to not just address issues of accessibility when it comes to blindness and low vision but across the whole disability spectrum and clark we really have worked together with some of our colleagues in the blindness field to uh, to um, advocate for several key legislative imperatives in this year's session of Congress. That's right, we have. And uh, these imperatives are you know, shared priorities across the blindness community, and their impact will go much further. Uh, one that I'd like to highlight, the Medical Device Non-Visual Accessibility Act, which is also a, a key priority for our affiliate ACB Diabetics in Action. Um, certainly diabetes being a disease that is uh, the, the rates of diabetes are increasing in the United States, as are the chronic and comorbid conditions uh, leading to additional disabilities and complications among our population. Uh, we're fortunate that that bill has been reintroduced on a bipartisan basis to make at-home monitoring and remote diagnostic medical equipment accessible and in the House of Representatives, that is HR 1328. Uh, Carl, when we had a panel as part of our DC leadership topic, uh, we had a panel that discussed advocacy uh, issues important to the deaf blind community. One of the things that stood out to me there was the work that we're doing for accessible pedestrian signals, not just audible pedestrian signals, but accessible pedestrian signals that offer uh, audible and haptic vibration feedback. So if folks can't hear the audio, they can feel the vibrations. Is, are there other advocacy issues that ACB is working on that are important for the deafblind community? 
Yes, I would say that the CVTA, the, communi uh, the 21st Communication Video Technology Accessibility Act would be one, and that has a huge impact on the deafblind community, particularly the deafblind, the National Deafblind Distribution Equipment Program, which gives out devices to those um, who necessarily can't afford it, to those to be able to communicate. And I have actually seen letters from mothers and family members saying, thank you because now I can finally commute to my child or loved one because of your help, you know, or they can now communicate with their medical professional, their doctor. So that has a huge impact. That bill also has a lot to do with accessibility of cell phones, making sure they're hearing aid compatible and, and web browsers are built in a friendly and, 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 uh, also has a lot to do with captioning for the deaf and hard of hearing and audio description, which all the community take advantage of that I take. Uh, and I even think audio description would, would work well for those who are on the spectrum. So I think, I think all the things and initiatives that we're working on can work for people of multiple backgrounds and multiple abilities. I don't think we truly realize the impact of what we're doing. And when we do we to our legislator, do it from that perspective, because that way we're not so narrow an audience. We're not just the blind and visually impaired, which is a small percentage. But if you include the blind and visually impaired, the deaf and hard of hearing and, and others, then the number and the population grows and you'll get much more buy-in from society at large. Dan, I like what Carl said there about audio description not only being for people who are blind. It's true. We find over and over again, it's not just people that are blind or, or have a significant vision loss. It's folks that, uh, you know, are wanting to uh, take advantage of the content but maybe don't have the ability to have their eyes on the on the tv or you're, you're seeing now that you know we have folks that are providing uh you know audio only audio with with audio description for like netflix that are available on their app now or housewives or those that are doing other jobs that want to still listen to a show. So it it's it, very interesting to me how the population of people that are actually consuming audio description is much larger than the uh, blind and low vision community. And the other uh, group that I would add is uh, speaking from personal experience, you know, even when I'm not around, my parents who are uh, getting older will still turn on audio description because it helps them follow the programming and remain engaged. And, and Swatha, uh, from your perspective, are there is there another priority that ACB is working on that benefits uh, not only the blind community, but folks who are blind and those uh, who have multiple disabilities as well? Yeah. So. I, um, this, this is going to be a bit the, the mouthful, but on um, the website, Software Accessibility Act, um, I think I got it right, I just wrote in there, but um, that, like, we call that the Web Access, Web Access Bill, Web Access Bill, but on um, this bill, um, introduced by Duckworth last year, um, it would kind of set standards for web, for websites and app, apps that um, take, into, take, into, take into account, like, Access for people with disabilities, not blindness. So, like, um, person person who who, who uses a switch, like, um, a device meant for um physical 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 mobility motor access. Um, like, it would make sure the websites, uh, websites and apps can uh, can accommodate that or can be used use with that. Like, for me, like, I don't use I don't use switch, but I use like I I try use my like I use my keyboard a lot, a lot more now. Um. So I mean, it's like it's pretty important for me to have access access by by a keyboard by like key commands to um, parts of a website. So um, like this bill really just kind of encompasses encompasses like all kinds of all disabilities and all um, how people can access web being disabled in any way, anyways. Like 
just go, go, go regardless of ability, if this would this bill with the Self Responsibility Act, um, it would kind of yeah govern that. So and to make 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 sure it's accessible, accessible function, functionally instead of just just by a standard. Thank you, Swatha, and absolutely yes. The blindness community is supporting the web access legislation, but so is the deaf and hard of hearing community. Uh, the organizations representing people with cognitive impairments, speech impairments, uh, and across the board. So we have some great partners who are working on these imperatives along with the American Council of the Blind. And our work will continue. We're here to celebrate on Global Accessibility Awareness Day, the gains that have been made, but we know that there is still plenty of work that remains and i'd like to take this opportunity to encourage everyone to join us in that advocacy work uh, also to join us at our annual conference and convention dan uh, registration is now open for the acb conference and convention and that'll be a great opportunity again to celebrate accessibility and celebrate disability very much so Clark, we will be uh, opening up with our opening ceremony on July 1st, and it'll be running through our banquet on July 6th. So we encourage everybody to register. Uh, you can participate either virtually or in person. And we'll also have lots of hybrid events where everybody can come together and share. So we really encourage everybody come to Schaumburg, Illinois, just right outside of uh, Chicago and then join, a, join us for a, just a really inspirational and informative week. That's right, in-person, virtual, hybrid, uh, CART live transcripts and captioning, as well as Spanish language translation. Uh, folks, if this doesn't celebrate huh. access and global accessibility awareness day, I don't know what does. <laughs> so please check out acbconvention.org. And as always, if you, have a question or if there's a, a certain element of it, accessibility um, that you are celebrating, please share it in the comments of this video. And you can always email Swatha and me at advocacy at acb.org to share as well. So Carl Richardson, Swatha Nandakumar, and Dan Spoon, thank you for joining uh, me and ACB for this video here today. And here on Global Accessibility Awareness Day, as in all days of the year, we like to tell folks to keep advocating. They all smile.